On the other hand, Secretary Clinton, the senator from New York State, she heard the same evidence that I heard. She voted for the war in Iraq. And while we are in on issues of war and peace, let me say this. We all know that not only should ISIS, must ISIS be defeated, ISIS must be crushed. But we also know that this country and our brave men and women in the military should not be involved in perpetual warfare in the Middle East. Now, I have heard many of my colleagues, my Republican colleagues, especially on the floor of the Senate, on the floor of the House, they're really tough. They want to go to war here. They want to go to war there. They want to go there. But let me tell you something. It is not their kids who are going to go to war. It is the children of working families in this country. So we have got to understand that war and military force sometimes, of course, has got to be used. But it is the last recourse, not the first recourse. There is another area where Secretary Clinton and I disagree. She wants to raise the minimum wage, and that's good. She wants to raise it to 12 bucks an hour, not good enough. I am proud to have stood on the picket lines with fast food workers from McDonald's and Burger King. And they understand that in this country we need a $15 an hour minimum wage. And I will stand with those workers in that fight. This campaign is asking the American people to think outside of the box and outside of status quo thinking. This campaign is asking people why it is that there is only one major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people. Now, I have been criticized for saying this, so let me say it again. And this is a big, big deal. In my view, health care is a right of all people, not a privilege. And thinking outside of the box, ask us to think why it is that if you are wealthy in this country, you can get great health care. But if you're working class or poor, you may not have any health insurance at all, or you're going to have very high deductibles and co-payments. We lose thousands of people every year who do not have the money to go to the doctor when they should. In my view, when we understand that 29 million Americans have no health insurance, even more are underinsured, and when we are getting ripped off every single day by the drug companies who charge us the highest prices in the world for medicine, when we end up paying far, far more per capita for health care than do the people of any other major country, now is the time for us to go forward and pass a Medicare for all single pay program. Now I want you to think for a moment, and this is thinking outside of corporate TV, it's thinking outside of the status quo. Think what that means for America. It means that anybody in this country who gets sick goes to the doctor when they need to go.
It means that if you get seriously ill, or you have an accident, you run up a big hospital bill, you're not going to go bankrupt. And this is what it also means, which is pretty revolutionary. It means that right now in America, we have millions of people doing jobs that they really do not want to do, but they're staying on those jobs because they may have a decent health insurance plan for their families. Yes. Think what happens to America when we unleash the entrepreneurial spirit of this country. When millions of people can go out, start businesses, and know that they will have health insurance for themselves and their families. That is revolutionary. This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the African American community. And they are crying out for reforms of a broken criminal justice system. Now, I was a mayor for eight years, and I worked very closely with my local police department and police departments all over this country. Vast majority of police officers are honest, hardworking, and they're doing a very, very difficult job. They deserve our support. But like any other public official, when a police officer breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. We need major reforms of local police departments. We've got to start demilitarizing local police departments. We have to make local police departments reflect the diversity of the communities they serve. We need as a nation to understand that lethal force, the killing of somebody, is the last response, not the first response. We need to end, and I've got legislation in to do this, private corporate ownership of prisons yes. and detention yes. centers. We need to rethink the so-called war on drugs. Over the last 30 years, millions of people have received criminal records because of possession of marijuana. Today, today under the Federal Controlled Substance Act, marijuana is listed as a Schedule One drug next to heroin. I have introduced legislation and will implement as president getting marijuana out of 